Hey, hey, hey. It's Rev T in the building with Tuesdays with Tawana. What's going on, fam? I am Tawana, aka Rev T in the building, your curator and host for Tuesdays with Tawana. Hey, Tammy, what's going on, my beautiful niece? Thank y'all for joining on Facebook Live. Thank you for those that will join on the podcast later. What's going on, fam? Let's get it popping. Cordio, good looking out with the Erica and Jill vibe shirt. Thank you so much. Had to represent today. Hey, Mother Carolyn, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. We got a lot to cover on this Tuesday, so holla at me, I'll holla back. Feel free to share your thoughts, your feelings, what's welling up for you, what's going on in the depths of your soul. Um, If you listen to the podcast, there is ways to leave messages and ask questions because we are dealing with some trying times right now. Um, my Erica and Jill vibes on the inside just doesn't seem to be matching what's going on in our world. So I pause right now to say the names of Brianna Taylor. And I take a breath, a breath that she is no longer able to take. I pause and say the name Elijah McLean. Take another breath for a breath that he has, is no longer to, able to take and he's been gone for over a year and Colorado, Denver Metro, Aurora still has not received justice for his heinous death. And of course, the most recent And there are a few others. So these people are representative of a larger number, right? Um, Jacob Blake. We breathe hope into his situation, hoping that he will hold on and keep fighting um, to live and not die at the hands of police brutality and this murderous behavior. Um, Hey, Angela. Always good to see you. Always good to see you. Thank you for joining. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Thank y'all for not leaving me out here all alone. So let's talk a bit. Um, my, my, my spirit is grieving. I'm very intentional about protecting my space. I've, I've learned that through my diagnosis. It's one of the many lessons that I've learned on this journey. Um, to take moments to breathe, to take moments of self-care and lighting candles and prayer and meditation. And what's going on outside is just totally antithetical, totally the opposite, totally contrary to what's going on in my bubble, right? For instance, let's speak the name of Julian Edward Roosevelt Lewis, a 60-year-old black man killed in Georgia over a traffic stop. I believe it was just a broken taillight or something. So we speak his name, um, speaking that justice will be served, that these police officers will not only be arrested and charged, but they will be find, found, con- they will be convicted of their crimes. These are crimes that they are permitted to commit. So we pause. Hey brother, what's going on Larry? Good to see ya. Yes, so this bubble, right? We, I, I, the term bubble, of course, I think of the NBA and the NBA bubble, no one in, no one out. And it, that's my life right now. I mean, I do go out. I go out for my walk every day and then I feel like the little um, machine on Tetris. No, not Tetris, Galaxia, whatever it's called, Galaxy, Galaxia, where it's kind of dodging the little 
raindrop bullets coming down and it's just dodging. So I'm walking and I got to cross the street because someone's walking this way or jogging this way without a mask. And then I cross over to the other way and then, or we walk in the grass to stay six feet apart. So it's constantly dodging these bullets out here, literally and figuratively based on hate and racism, economic challenges, Galaga. Yes, thank you, Angela. That's what I feel like right now. Like, you know, when I walk out into the street, my, my whole presence is a political statement, right? It's, it's a political statement in and of itself. And the challenge is, is that I can't control, I, I can control my statement and what I want to present to the world. I can't control how the world receives it. And unfortunately, we are dying at the hands of systemic racism because they don't perceive and don't see what we see. They don't honor what we honor. They don't respect what we respect. So we're dying mentally, physically, and spiritually at the hands of systemic racism or patriarchy or misogyny or misogynoir, economic challenges. So how do we move through this space, right? How do we continue to come together and build community through this space and come together and start um, uh, creating and defining ways that we can live, right? Changing policies and defunding the police and using those funds that will add value or speak life into our communities and so on and so forth. Um, hey, Mama Lovey. Yeah, sing the song by Marvin Gaye. So, how many years? 50 years? Mother, mother, there's too many of you crying. Brother, brother, there's too many of you dying. This is nothing new. The height, the heights that we are experiencing right now, the height of racism, the height of sexism, the height of economic challenges, the height of this pandemic in our generation, it's the highest that we have seen, but this is not the highest ever, right? From Marvin Gaye going back to um, even further than that, where we had to deal with racism at levels where we were dying. Um, May 1971, Marvin Gaye wrote that song. I was one and we are still talking about the same thing. So how do we then come together to combat this, right? How do we literally fight for our lives? How do I, um, how do I control the well of emotions that rise up whenever I think about my son and my daughter and my grandson, my black son and my black daughter and my black grandson who have to travel in and out in this world of hate and they're only representative of a larger group, right? So how do we then reconcile that? How do we deal with that? How do we come to terms with it? And it's so tough because the answer is not so clear because we've been dealing with this for so, so long. And what's ironic is, right, I was diagnosed with cancer in November of 2016, and it's not the cancer that has me in this space. You would think that between the chemotherapy and immune compromise and all the other things that come along with healing, because we know healing ain't easy. We've talked about that. It's a journey. It's not an easy journey. It's not one where you're skipping through the tulips and it's not even the cancer per se that's really, that's in my body, right? It's the cancerous things that are happening in our world that go mistreated that are killing us, mind, body, and spirit. 
as tired. Ah, oh. Reverend Dr. Lisa Allen McLaurin, um, yesterday I put a post up, like nobody told Zoom that school would be starting back because I guess Zoom was like, I was tired. I ain't fooling around with y'all folk. Y'all could have ended this pandemic with number 45. If y'all had a different number 45, y'all could have ended this pandemic a long time ago. And because y'all didn't, y'all want to wear me out? <laughs> I'm taking a break. So Zoom crashed on yesterday. For those of you who do not know, um, they finally got it up and running again. But I was tired, tired when I saw inadvertently actually part of the video of Jacob Blake. I quickly scrolled by. I said, I cannot be re-traumatized. I cannot go through this uh, again. I I, I lift. I googled what was happening just to see his name. So I could speak his his name um, and pray for his healing. Tamika says racism in the United States toward black people amount to genocide. I mean, that's historically true, right? Like if we look at our First Nation indigenous beloveds, you know, the land was stolen from them. Blood was shed on the land that we stand on right now because of capitalism, because of hate, because of greed, because of racism, because of whiteness. Come on. Come on, Tamika, I'm going to leave your, your quote up here for everyone to engage and, and, and read. I'll try to read um, some of it. Um, in the United States, black genocide is the characterization that the mistreatment of African American by both United States government and white Americans, both past and present, amounts to genocide, right? It, which brings me to another challenge, right? So we're not only dealing with the adverse forces of whiteness and capitalism and white supremacy and white dominant thought and white privilege and all the other whiteness that we could be rooted in. We're not only dealing with a double consciousness here, being black and being rooted in American whiteness, but then let's talk about what we have to deal with with one another. So Black is King came out a few weeks ago um, on Disney Plus, and um, it's it's from uh, Beyonce's album, The Gift, right? Thank you, Tammy, for your powerful words. I got to copy this, um, this quote for sure and post it. Um, so... Black is King comes out. So we have so many warring ideas about Black is King. The visual art, the imagery, the tapping into our ancestral roots, the, the music, the drumming, the beat, the dancing, the feels, the, 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 the garb, all of that went under scrutiny, right? Um, hey, Amber, what's going on, my friend? In the words of Bob, Bob Marley, how long shall they kill our prophets as we stand aside and look? Amber, you're not about to slay us today. No, 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 mm -mm. Mm -mm. not today. Amber, Reverend Dr. Amber, not today. <laughs> as we stand aside and look and fight one another. Let me put up a quote by um, Audre Lorde. It's, it's, in our work and in our living, talking about black folk, we must recognize that difference is a reason for celebration and growth rather than a reason for destruction. And let me tell you a story. So started with black and king, so black is king. So put a pen right there. When I was in seminary, um, I read a book um, about missionaries in Botswana. Botswana is a country in Africa. And shout out to my beautiful friends in Botswana. Um, I love y'all dearly. Um, and uh, I believe 
oh, I can't call the name of the book. I want to say Musa Dube. Um, I'll try to put it in the link um, later on. But it talked about uh, the people of Botswana who studied a particular religion and one of their gods or spirits um, was called Bad Badimo, B-A-D-I-M-O, right? And so when missionaries come in to feed the poor, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, take care of the poor, the least of these, they began to say that their God, their spirit, their deity, Badimo, was a demon. And they came in and inserted their own narrative of their white religion into this culture. And now you have this, this African traditional spiritual prowess now infiltrated and dismantled and disrespected and disregarded and demonized as others came in to insert their narrative. And that's how we then control the hearts, minds, and souls of the people. And then we begin to shift their focus from being this uh, universal culture to an individualized, self-centered, egocentric culture, right? So they come in and not only bring in their own narrative of religion and spirituality, but they also come in and change the mindset of our communal nature. Trey Boogie in the building. What's up, Trey? Trey is one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Good to see you, my brother. So they come in and they change that narrative, right? So now you have these people in Botswana who are now thinking that what they have learned all along is now demonized. So let's fast forward to Black is King. Right. So Black is King offers us this full picture of of spirituality, of different spiritual cultures and prowess. Um, it shows us uh, different uh, hues that we present in life. It, it shows our dynamic mysticism. It shows all of this. And then you have the um, contrary comments that say that African-Americans, which is a term that I personally don't use, and I'll tell you why in a moment, but African-Americans are now capitalizing off of African tradition and culture, and we are actually co-opting it. So we're co-opting our own culture and spirituality and religion and art and beauty which I understand because people are doing that to them from America. So they're putting Americans under this large umbrella. So now, of course, we're labeled as African American and we are disconnected from the continent of Africa. And now we are co-opting their spirituality and spiritual prowess and their dress and the African drumming and dancing and spiritual. Yeah. So they're angry at us, at Beyonce, really, and angry at us for making this, this work where, for me, I can't speak for Beyonce. I didn't talk to her before the, the, the podcast. Um, so, I, she, <laughs> so I watched it and, and, and felt as if I was learning about me. I saw me on the screen. I saw me on the screen. I saw me through voice. I saw me through song. I saw me in the type of body and skin color. I saw me in all of that and tapping into something that I, something that was taken away from me that I did not have an opportunity to learn and to grow on. Because here in America, there is this twisted view of Christianity that was rooted in slavery, that gave people a religious religious reason, if you will, to enslave us and, and justify slavery, right? Slaves obey your masters. Or to um, sexualize women through the rape of Tamar. Or to silence women. Women should remain silent and so on and so forth, 
right? They used scriptures instead of to speak life. They spoke death to many situations and circumstances. So when we are here in America as black people exploring our roots and exploring from whence we came, because we know that this double consciousness has me torn because I don't feel like this is my home. But when I look at my home, I feel it. I can sense it. I can smell it. I can see it. I can taste it. I can experience the fullness of what it is to come from the continent of Africa. And I say the continent because I don't know where I'm from. I can assume I'm from a particular area because of the transatlantic slave trade, but I don't know. I don't know for sure. I'm not giving anyone my DNA. That's for another podcast. But I don't know, but I know that when I visited South Africa, there was something that brought tears to my eyes when I touched my my feet, touched the ground. There was something in me when I was able to eat the food and to be around people who were from South Africa. And I also saw people with weaves and outfits like mine. So me having this thought that everyone is walking around in garb and um, natural hair and no, (laughs) that's not happening. So the same thing that's happening in America, if you will, is similar things are happening in spaces and places on the continent of Africa. And then they're mad at us for doing the same thing that other people have done to them. Right. You see the conundrum. You see how this just it's just a tangled mess and eyes tired. My insides are not matching what's going on outside because I want to connect to something with my homeland. Now, I do realize it was another narrative that was put out there that said, well, all of us weren't kings and queens. All of us weren't great. (laughs) Hold on a minute. But we were human beings and we are human beings. And, and we should be held in high regard as the beautiful, divine human beings that we are. Whether we were adorned as royalty or we were whatever the opposite of that is. I don't even know because I don't want to degrade or demean anyone's stance or anyone's position in life. So we were human beings that was stripped from our land, a land that taught us community, a land, yes, we had some issues, I'm sure. Yes, we had some problems. How do I know? Because some of the slave masters hired some of our people to steal some of our people to get them to America. Well, what was soon to become America, right? We, we see it right now with number 45 at the RNC. We see people that look like me standing up there supporting someone who is clearly racist. We have Herschel Walker, who claims this friendship with number 45 for 20, 30 years or whatever, talking about, I can't believe that y'all think that I would be friends with the racist. Dude, go have 10 seats somewhere. Please go have 10 seats somewhere. Because your actions, number 45's actions speak louder than word <laughs> Trey said you need your own TV show your personality is fire keep pushing God bless you love you always I love you too Trey 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 was in the streets taught me how to be in the streets and and to support those in the streets and to love those unconditionally in the streets and he loved me unconditionally and he was there for me when I fell ill I mean the list goes on and on Trey is just forever special place in my heart. So, so now so now we have all this tang- this tangled web, right? Of who we be, who we're not, who we should be, how we should show up. Should Beyoncé be dancing in, you know, African traditional dances and drummers and using African producers and and using um Yoruba spiritual practices and Ifa and queens and using water as symbolism and can we stop judging can can we go back to audra lord's quote in our work in our living we must recognize that difference from america to uh to the continent of africa is the reason for celebration and and growth 
rather than a reason for destruction. Yo, don't tear me down. I'm supposed to be your beloved. I'm supposed, you know, they talk about all skin folk ain't kin, kin folk. I get that. I really can't stand that term, but unfortunately it's true. I probably can't stand it because on some level it is true. Um, so how do we then reconcile within ourselves and with our own community when we're dealing with this double consciousness and for women, this triple consciousness of being black, being woman and being in, in America rooted in whiteness? How do we make that happen? How do we bring that together? How do we tap into our universalism? How do we tap into our spiritual prowess without being demonized, not only by the people who have this false sense of power and control and individualism, but now I'm being um, degraded and demeaned and disrespected by my own people. my insides, <laughs> my hope, the peace in my spirit is not matching what's happening outside. Uh, my brother Larry says, um, on average, black men in the U.S. receive sentences that are 19.1 longer than the white men that are convicted. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're black, me black men and black people are disproportionately arrested, killed, um, economically challenged. Uh, my niece just sent me something about redlining and the challenge with um, um, mortgage loans. And we, we saw it with black farmers, um, how black farmers, their land was taken because the banks behind the scenes were fudging the numbers and not giving loans to black farmers for them to keep their land. And they were giving loans to all of the white farmers. And then when they would lose their land, white farmers would come in and take it and then capitalize off of that. It's a vicious cycle that keeps going on. And when we know better, we're supposed to do better. And just because I don't understand you doesn't mean I automatically disagree with you so I need to open myself up to learn of each other's culture so that we can come together because we'll realize that we have more in common than we have separate that we have different now I'm talking to my black beloveds right now it's a whole nother level when we talk about our white folk right so we, we there is something that has to bring us to together if you will Right, um, uh, Doctor, um, uh, that's Doctor Carolyn, Mother Carolyn. We bring it together when people. Oh, we bring it together when people like you, um, bless people like you, bless us, like you are doing today with education and empowerment. Thank you for teaching. And she says, unfortunately, while thought has permeate that thought has permeated our world, your teaching will help us help each one win one we will get the victory absolutely absolutely so you know we we, we can't close on a, a sour note we we can't close on a you know a bad note um the streets matter that's right amber say that dr amber love my love is my religion jackson the streets matter remember that we are not here to disregard disrespect, demean, degrade, dehumanize anyone, anyone. We get enough of that from the world. Can we not do that? Can we embrace black as king for what it is and make the critique? Now, mind you, please know we can critique. And do we really have to degrade, demean, and disrespect in our critique? Can we say what we have issue with and just say we have issue with it? The challenge is, beloved, when we begin to say things and we begin to judge and we begin to critique and we begin, begin to knock what we don't know, your voice matters, your opinion matters, your truth matters. And when it begins to hurt and kill and demean and degrade someone else, that's where we have a problem. That's where we have a problem. So learning to speak life and not death into a situation, learning to speak life, even when I don't understand, 
sitting with you and having a dialogue, having this dialogical moment where we're exchanging information about each other, inserting our voice into a narrative that often um, neglects us or marginalizes us, and marginalizes us, inserting ourselves. Like I said, when I walk out of this door, I am a political statement in and of itself because I am a black woman. Inserting ourselves into a narrative that often ignores us or kills us and inserting a narrative of life, inserting a narrative of hope, inserting a narrative of critique, in inserting a narrative of wanting to do better, inserting a narrative of wanting to know better and to know more, inserting a narrative that is beyond the narrow scope of Christianity, inserting a narrative that embraces the fullness of who we are, inserting a narrative that brings us together in a collective work and responsibility, inserting a narrative that brings us together to buy up houses in a community so that community is no longer designed and designated as an impoverished community because we are recycling black, daughter, black dollars, inserting a narrative that is contrary to what number 45 is saying that um, Plies put out a, a video last night or the night before, before the RNC, and he said, why is it that white people always want to instill fear? Oh, the immigrants are going to come and take your job or, you know, black folk are going to move into your community and your, your home is going to decrease in value. They live out of fear. We live out of hope. We live out of faith. We live out of strength. We live out of perseverance. We live out of resilience. We don't live out of fear. Let us stop signing and, and, and ascribing to a narrative that wasn't meant for us and begin to co-create and recreate because it has been there. It's not like we're creating it out of nothing. It has been there. We just have to reach back and go get it like Sankofa. We need to have our Sankofa moment to reach back and go get it and then fly forward. That's what we got to do. We live out of love. We live out of love, beloved. So as we close, I want to encourage you. Um, one, if you go on to soultosoulsisters.org, um, go on to voter engagement. Let my people vote is really pushing um, to uh, combat this voter suppression and the shenanigans that's going on with the United States Postal Service, you can click on your state. Make sure you are registered to vote. Um, make sure that your information is correct. Um, if you're not registered, you can go on and register because it'll take you to your state's voter registration page. So go on to soultosoulsisters.org. Let my people vote is the movement. And uh, voter engagement is the link that you click on so that you can make sure that you are registered to vote. If we got to walk 50 miles with no shoes on in the snow, if our desire is to vote, we are going to get out there and vote. Ashe. Hey, Miss Shirley Kazanave, I live out of love and faith. Love and faith. That's what we got. Although I'm in this bubble, I still got to let my light shine for all to see. I might be in this bubble, but we are co-creators and we're going to create ways to insert our voice into a narrative that continues to erase us. We will not be erased. We will not be ignored. We will not be disregarded. We will not be marginalized. We will not continue to be oppressed. We will reach the masses and we will do great things, great things with our own people on this, in this disunited states <laughs> and with our brethren and sistren and beloveds on the continent of Africa. Let's come together and let's do big things because we are enough. We are worthy. We are worth it. And we are enough. I love you.
Thank you for joining Tuesdays with Tawana. Thank you for rocking with me. Thank you for not leaving me out here all alone. I love y'all to the moon and beyond. Um, I will see you on next Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern time. Be great. Drink water. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. I love you dearly. Thanks for rocking with me. I'm out. Later.